This is Roger Taguna. Taguna crouching down against the Danbury Whaler. A fist, and both helmets fly off, and they go at it like crazy. Behind the head of Taguna. Taguna is still holding on against Carancy, and Carancy with a huge haymaker to the back, and looks like the stripes are pulling it together. Taguna and Carancy. Both of those men are going to serve five for fighting in their dressing rooms. What's going on, everybody? This is Sean Johnson, host of the new Benchminer Hockey Podcast. And on today's episode, if you're watching the YouTube podcast, you can see um, if you're on the Apple podcast, it is Mr. Matt Carancy, Fed legend. Matt, thank you so much for coming on today, buddy. Yeah, thanks for having me, Sean. It's an honor to be here. Absolutely. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about everything, your uh, career in the Fed. Let's start in your early years. So you came in the Fed in uh, 2010 with the Danbury Whalers. And you spent six seasons there. What made you want to stay for so long? Well, you know, there, there was a variety of things, actually. Um, I think, you know, the way I hit it off with Espo, uh, we kind of developed a, a really uh, tight relationship there. You know, he really took care of me there more than he, than he really had to. So that, that was a big part. Um, uh, the fans were, you know, were awesome. Uh, still are awesome, you know, uh, to this day. So uh, mm -hmm. always a pleasure playing in front of them. And um uh, Herm Sorcher as well, uh, you know, me and him um, also developed a, a good relationship and uh, it's just a great place to play. You know, the city's awesome. Um, they're kind of right in the middle of everything over there. So, uh, and of course, having success there, always going deep in the playoffs and then, um, you know, kind of culminating in 2013 with, uh, you know, winning the, the Commissioner's Cup. That was, you know, that was pretty huge. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, everything everything really worked out. I never had an issue, uh, you know, contract wise or anything like that. So, um, yeah, it was uh, it was really fun to uh, spend the the uh, six seasons there. Yeah, I know that you are a fan favorite there. I haven't heard anyone say anything bad about you there yet. So, yeah, um, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> right, I, I just thought it was kind of impressive, like six straight seasons in one city. Not many people do that. So, I just kind of wanted to get your take on what kept you there. I've heard that before, where um, you know, in, in, in minor pro, you, you don't usually stick in one place for that long. So, um, yeah, it was special to do that. Absolutely. And that was um, six years in Danbury. Um, then you went to the Watertown Wolves for two years. Why the transition to Watertown? Well, um, after, um, I believe it was uh, Dave Lund, I think, uh, took over. And uh, it was the Danbury Titans at the time. And they kind of went in, they're going in a different direction. They weren't really, um, I don't think Bruce at, at the time, um, I don't, not to say he put all his eggs in, in one basket. The, the last year I was in Danbury with the Titans, we lost in the finals, but I, I they're just going a different way. And uh, they didn't really want any of the uh, vets back. Um, I think they were looking um, in terms of budget, you know, to, uh, uh, to play things a little differently. So um, when Espo got the job in Watertown, um, I kind of spoke with him briefly and, um, I wasn't even actually going to play that season. And, uh, I ended up going there and, uh, I told him, you know, I wasn't in the best, uh, shape coming because I got there just after training camp, you know, things were kind of all up in the air for me. So, uh, got there and it was, uh, kind of a rocky uh, start to the season. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, basically because Espo was there again, that's pretty much why I, uh, I decided to go there instead of, uh, signing back with Danbury. Okay. And uh, after your sixth season, before you transitioned to Watertown, were you contemplating retirement at that point? Uh, I was. Uh, yeah, at that point, I was, uh, I think it was 31. And um, it, at that point, I had nothing, nothing to do with my age. Uh, I was just looking to go to Europe, and that kind of fell through. And, um, and um, money-wise, too, it's got to be feasible, right? So, um, mm -hmm. I mean, certain guys, after you hit a certain point, you know, in this league, in, in minor pro, you're not really going to be making uh, too much more once you kind of uh, cap out type of thing. And I think I was kind of approaching that. So, um, I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do, but, um, you know, Phil kind of talked, talked me into it. I'm really glad that he did, because if he didn't, then I, I never would have stayed there the next year, which is, you know, which, you know, all <laughs> too well that, uh, we oh, yeah. went in it all. So one of the greatest nights. Oh yeah. Of all time. That, that was, that's a night I'll never, <laughs> I'll never forget. That's for sure. Yeah. I'll never forget Gavin Yates falling off the bar, landing on his head, <laughs> almost dying. <laughs> yeah, um, that, that was one of many memories. <laughs> oh, yeah, goodness. Yates yeah. Speaking of uh, the whole Europe thing, so I, I've talked to a few players here and there, and it seems like a lot of European players want to come play North American hockey, where 
players from Canada, US, they want to go play European style. Yeah. What makes you want to go play European style or what made you want to? Uh, well, it's, it's something I've always wanted to do. And mm -hmm. um, just the way that I play the game, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a playmaker. I'm more of a pass first guy, which has probably hurt me <laughs> more in my career than anything. <laughs> um, but I'm a setup guy. I just enjoy it. And I, I think I'm, I think more of a East West type of game, which is more of the a European style um, as opposed to North American where it's North South, you know, dump and chase uh, type of thing. Mm -hmm. So um while i do play and enjoy the physical aspect of the game it's just uh that east west style and european style is always something i wanted to uh to check out and just getting to live over there too you know would have been a great life experience so that was uh yeah it was always something that i was really you know really interested in absolutely yeah it's funny you said you said uh you're a pass first guy i'm looking at the stat sheet here 202 points in the fed 124 of them were apples <laughs> i didn't even know that <laughs> Well, I guess that makes a little bit more sense then, huh? Right, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And uh, another fun fact, eight years in the Fed, five trips to the finals. Oh, wow, yeah. This, yeah, that's right. You've been to the finals five times Yeah. in eight years. That's crazy. I didn't even think about that, actually. Um, I mean, yeah. no offense, you don't have Jordan numbers, but you got LeBron numbers. You got two, <laughs> two wins out of those five. Hey, I'll take it, man. I'm not greedy. That's right. <laughs> yeah at least you got um, two rings some players don't have one you know yeah yeah i know i you're absolutely right man i play with guys that um have played almost twice as long as i've had and and don't have a ring you know what i mean i played at you know different levels and stuff and made a championship series but um yeah it's special uh, and anytime you get a chance uh at any level in any league to win a pro title that's uh you know that's an opportunity that you may never get again so uh that was really special uh with Danbury, with the Whalers, and then with uh, Watertown, you know, uh, they, they were both different, but both special for, uh, for the same reason. So. No, I absolutely couldn't agree. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to throw a wild one here for you. Yeah, go for it. Wildest moment in the fed prior to retiring. Oh boy. On the ice or off? <laughs> Man, well, let's go with on the ice first. Yeah. I think I could answer that one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's, uh, Let's see, all this moment on the ice. Well, one would uh, would certainly have to be the line brawl, uh, game two of the finals with the, the Titans in um, 2017, uh, I think it was, or 2016. That, that was something. 2016 with Dayton? Was that with Dayton? Uh, it was a Port Huron. Port Huron, that's right. That's yeah, right. against Port Huron at home in Danbury. That that was something else. Uh, and that, that went back to... The game before where a pacer um took a shot at uh at um uh patch ryan patch um and pacer's one of my teammates now so we kind of had a laugh about that but uh that would definitely <laughs> yeah never thought that would happen but uh that that was definitely one of them um another one would have been the line brawl in cape cod uh started by peter vetri our goalie which which was uh he almost killed a guy in uh in the corner or something else but Th those were two, two that come to mind. But if I had more time, I guarantee you, I could think of something more ridiculous for sure. Right. Yeah. You don't hear that very often that uh, a goalie started it. So yeah, kind of interesting. Yeah. yeah, that was, that was a very interesting game. It's the only game actually we took a boat uh, to that game, took a ferry uh, to play against Cape Cod in Martha's Vineyard. And I was, it was a pretty good turnout too. They had a good crowd there. And uh, mm -hmm. of course, leave it up to the whalers that year to, uh, <laughs> to get into a massive line brawl. So. I believe that was right before I came on the scene. That so that must have been like 2012, give or take, right? Yeah, I think it was 2012. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Last one about your your career, your early career. Right. Most memorable moment in your career. We'll, we'll say 2010 to 2018. Okay. Um, I I would have to say uh, I I mean winning the first one um what would, would have would have to be it. Um, right. Th th there's a few. A uh, few moments where you know that I, I that stick out in my head to this day. Um, scoring the the OT winner against New Jersey opening night was one. Um, uh, the OT winner against uh, Dayton and Dayton was was another one. Um, but but that winning the cup with the Whalers and lifting that cup over my head for the first time, uh, yeah, that mm -hmm. was that was really special. So I'd have to go. Oh, I bet. That. Yeah. No, great moment. Yeah. All right, let's talk a little bit about uh, your retirement. So I know we were together 2017, 2018. Yeah. Won the championship at Watertown. Had a great night. Don't remember half of it. <laughs> Did you want to go out on top? Is that why you retired? Were you contemplating retirement prior to that? 
kind of what led into retirement right after that moment? Well, uh, part you're right. Part of it is kind of being able to go out on top. Uh, that's mm-hmm. not that's not something a, a lot of guys in any sport really have the option of doing, right? Because you know you never know when it's going to be your last game. Uh, so that was part of it, but it was just um, it, that was um, mentally and emotionally for me, it was kind of a tough season. Uh, it's not, it's not really something I, I've talked about, but, uh, yeah, I had a lot going on and, um, I was just frustrated with myself that, uh, I, I really couldn't get my focus, uh, you know, to where I wanted it to be and, uh, not put up the numbers that I wanted. And I was kind of, you know, kind of rattled about that. And then you remember earlier in the season, you know, we were barely in a playoff spot. So, uh, yep. it, you know, it wasn't, it was looking grim for us early on. It, it uh, was, and we were on like 11 game <laughs> losing streak and <laughs> right. man, we, we couldn't buy a win. It was horrible. Yeah, it was, it was. And, and I, I wasn't playing my best hockey at, uh, at that point either. So, um, you know, I was just doing my best to be resilient, stick with it. And then all, all of a sudden out of nowhere, we just go on this rampage and, uh, we end up, you know, winning the whole damn thing. So, um, I, I wanted to go to Germany um, that summer and I uh, had an option to do so. It started training and then midway through one workout, I just kind of, you know, dropped the weight and I just said, I'm done. And that was it. Just like that. And um, while you were retired, did you play any hockey at all? Any pickup hockey, men's league, hell, uh, bubble hockey? I don't know. <laughs> air hockey. Um, I played men's league for, yeah, one summer, I think. Uh, with an old buddy of mine, uh, Mark Cipriani, and uh, just because they need an extra guy. Um, but then after that, I was just like, I wanted nothing to do with the game. I barely even watched hockey after that. I'd watched the Red Wings. That was it. Um, and then it was only when Danbury came back into the league and I, I spoke briefly to uh, uh, about potentially signing with them with uh, Billy McCreary. And then I spoke with Herm Sorcher about it, kind of toyed with the idea. Um, but then I just, you know, the the elements weren't right. And there was other things that um, just weren't going to work out. So um, that's why that didn't work. And then mm-hmm. obviously we know where I am now. So, so that leads us into the next section here, returning to the fed. Why after four years, it was kind of like an hour and ever type of thing. I was toying with the idea and was kind of vacillating back and forth when Danbury came in. Um, and then uh, I wanted to go to Europe and I actually had it lined up to go play in uh, the first division in Belgium. And um, my agent out there really helped me out. And uh, my other buddy, Lester Brown, um, you know, really pulled some strings for me because 36 year old ex pro hasn't played in four years. You know, you're not exactly a hot commodity. (laughs) So Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what kind of numbers you have in the past. Uh, So I was really looking forward to that opportunity. And then um, uh, the league over there changed the import rule um, from five to two. So uh, that was pretty much the end of me going over there for this season. And uh, that's when I called Phil back because he had called me earlier in the summer and told mm-hmm. me, he's like, you know, if you, if you want to come, you got a spot, which I really appreciated. So I gave him a call back and uh, I just said, you know, Hey, you uh, still got number 19 lying around there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, that's, yeah, that's pretty much how I ended up here. Good old number 19. You won't let that number go. Will you? No, 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 definitely not. <laughs> I, I know the answer to this, but um. I'm assuming you chose Mississippi out of all the teams simply because Phil, right? Yeah, that was, that was right. definitely a big part. Uh, the warm weather and, and the beaches didn't hurt. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. All right. So this is kind of funny. So I was watching the um, Columbus and Mississippi game, the exhibition game, and uh, in the YouTube comments, everyone wants to know, what is a Seawolf? Can you answer that? You know what? I was asking the same thing myself not too long ago. So I, I wish I could, but now, now that you've asked me, I definitely have to find out what exactly uh, a sea wolf is. So I'm, I'm actually right after this, I'm going to Google that because if I don't do it now, I will forget to do it. Good Absolutely. question. I'm, yeah, I, I want to know what it is. And I thought it was funny that the uh, Columbus fans were actually trying to think of the most creative way to put down a sea wolf. And I, I think the best <laughs> one was puddle puppy so far. Puddle puppy. Oh, okay. That's, puddle that's, puppy. that's, that's the best that's, one I saw. That's creative. What has it been like reuniting with Coach Espo so far? Uh, it's been fun. Uh, we're having a good time. Um, you know, still having our, you know, daily debates, I'm sure, as you remember, um, you know, which is always entertaining. But, uh, uh, yeah, it, it's it's great. I Just being back with the guys and uh, having Phil at the helm, it feels like, you know, the you know the, the old days in, uh, in Danbury. So, um, 
playing alongside Pacer is a little strange. You know, he, he's a great guy, but we've been enemies for so long. I'm still getting right. used to, you know, having him on, <laughs> having him on my side. Um, play with Justin Barr too. Uh, you know, he's, he's, he's a, a grizzled vet. He's been around for a while. So um, it's, it's been really fun getting to know the guys and uh, starting to uh, really kind of hit our stride now going into the first mm-hmm. game of the season with training camp winding down. So it's been good. I'm really looking forward to getting the season started. Yeah, I was actually going to ask you about Pacer, um, what it's been like, you know, getting used to him as a teammate rather than opponent. Oh, it's been a blast. The guy is an absolute yeah. hoot. Yeah, he is. Uh, <laughs> we had um, me, him and Barzy uh, quite a few laughs uh, already. And uh, uh, yeah, we, we were just talking um, about our past and playing against each other. And uh, yeah, he, I'd say for the majority of my career, uh, besides Billy McCreary and uh, uh, I'd say Chris McCarthy, besides those mm-hmm. two guys, he would probably fit number three in the most hated guys that I, uh, I played against. So um, yeah, it's just, it's kind of funny how, uh, you know, how that works out. <laughs> Absolutely. I know that uh Pacer's one of those guys where fans see him as like public enemy number one, but as soon <laughs> yeah. as he comes off the ice, man, he's a who everyone loves this guy. Oh yeah. Yeah. And that's usually how it works. You know, yeah, even in Watertown, I think I think people liked Pacer when he played for Port Huron more than our own players. So. <laughs> I would be surprised. <laughs> he plays the villain well. He does a good job. He enjoys it. So, oh, absolutely. I know you, you uh, flirted with the idea of bringing him on as a surprise guest, and yeah, yeah. he's like, eh, maybe later. Yeah, well, he was he was excited to do it. It just he had a, a wedding to go to tonight. Ah, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So well, he was uh, he was out, but um, yeah, he said you know if there's a, another point, he would he would love to come on. He was pretty you know pretty uh, enthusiastic about it. So well, we will definitely get Pacer around here eventually. Same thing with Jay Croup, man. He's like, oh, I'm gonna come on, I'm gonna come on. Mm-hmm. That is a busy guy. So I'm I'm assuming Pacer's the same way. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Definitely. They do a whole lot more than just play hockey. They're they're running the show over there. Yeah. Yeah, they got a lot on their plates. So what are a couple of your personal goals for this season? Well, um, I mean, to be honest with you, any expansion team, it's it's tough to uh, – I should, it's tough to make the playoffs, but, I mean, that that's our goal for sure. My personal, personal goals are just, you know, putting up points and contributing. You know, as long as we're winning, I'm happy. Um, I really mm-hmm. – to be honest with you, I mean, a point-per-game guy, 20-goal guy, I mean, that that would be great. Um, I really don't know, uh, being away from the game four years, really what to expect. I know that I can still play. That's why I'm here. If I didn't think so, I, you know, I, I'd be gone after training camp. So, right. um, it's, it's kind of hard for me to, to, to answer that, uh, as long as I'm contributing in, um, uh, any way that I'm asked to, then, um, mm-hmm. you know, I'll be happy with that. And, and the main thing is the team succeeding. If we're winning and we're in a playoff spot, that's, that's the main thing. All right. That's a solid yeah. answer. Nothing wrong with that. Um, you didn't play in the first preseason game, did you? Uh, no, I didn't. No. Okay. I tried following it. it. That was tough. There was no names. There was only right. numbers on the back. You could hardly read them. So yeah, it was tough to keep track of that game. Um, were you in the building for that? I was. Yeah. We were playing in their practice facility. So I don't know uh, if they had their regular uh, gear set up in terms of um uh, recording the game or or whatnot the same cameras as they would in their main rank there uh but yeah for not you know barely being able to see the names and stuff i see why that would be tough to uh to follow yeah yeah they were wearing the practice jerseys and the font of the numbers was just it, mm-hmm. it was tough to follow so yeah. I, I couldn't keep track who was who mm-hmm. even um i think scott brand was announcing the game he's just like I- i'm just gonna pick someone so um <laughs> yeah so that that was kind of difficult to follow but mm-hmm. um a six to three victory for the sea wolves what are some of your takeaways? What did you see out there that you liked or that you didn't like? Well, the one thing that really impressed me about uh, our squad was uh, the level of battle and level of uh, compete that, that we, you know, uh, we showed out there. That was impressive. Um, it wasn't just a few guys. It wasn't just the rookies, guys that were trying to make the team. It was, you know, the guys that know they got a spot here, the veterans, it was everybody. And um, we, we looked, we looked quick. Um, mm-hmm. Guys kind of meshed on the ice. A lot better than I than I had uh, expected. Uh, we we looked in sync more so than I had expected. Um, in practice, you know, we were just trying to kind of get a feel for a feel for each other, right? Mm-hmm. So 
it takes a while for guys to get acclimated with their line mates and, uh, you know, their D-men and kind of uh, uh, get on the same page to the point where you don't really got to look in some instances, you know, a guy is going to be here or, you know, you're going to get the puck in, in this situation. So that kind of surprised me because that, that looked much more fluent than it did in, you know, in practice. Um, so mm-hmm. I was really happy with that. And uh, yeah, the fact that we scored six goals was another thing. I, I'll be honest. I was not expecting us uh, to score six. So um, yeah, that was, that was pretty impressive. Uh, tenders played awesome. That didn't surprise me, but uh, yeah. Yeah. That was, um, that was quite the game. I, I was very surprised. They they started quick and they never took their foot off the gas. It seemed like yeah. so. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty excited to see you guys as a, well, I, I would say home opener, but you start the season on the road in Binghamton, so I'm excited to see that game as well. Right. Um, yeah. let's switch it over a little bit. So let's talk about your Ring of Honor induction in Danbury. Talk about that a little bit. What was that like? That that was an incredible honor. Uh, it came it came as a complete shock. Um, I didn't even know they were doing that. So, uh, when, when I got the call from Herm, I, I was just beside myself. I said, yeah, absolutely. He asked me what I come down. I said, of course I'll come down, you know? So that was an amazing honor. It was a great night. I got to see, uh, you know, I, the fans, I got to see, um, a lot of old teammates, a, a few who were still playing for Danbury and, um, Espo was there as well. So, uh, that was cool. I got to hang out with him mm-hmm. and, uh, it was just, it was an all around fantastic night. Um, stayed in New York city the night before. So that was cool. Got to go out and kind of, uh, you know, see the town and, uh, yeah, just see my name up there in the ring of honor next to the likes of, you know, Nick Nieder, who everyone knows is, uh, you know, minor league legend. The guy's been everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, he's got more stories in the Bible. So, I mean, uh, to, you know, to be in there with him, AJ Galante, Jimmy Galante and, uh, Dave McIsaac, um, you know, to be inducted into anything with, with that category, yeah. Um, it is is a huge honor so um it was a very special night and i you know could, couldn't have been more thrilled what was the crowd like it, that had a pretty good crowd there yeah yeah um i will which again didn't surprise it didn't surprise me because dan bear is always uh drawn very well uh, for hockey mm-hmm. and uh you know they got some of the best fans in uh in in minor pro hockey so uh that didn't surprise me at all um they, you know, were all at the bar afterwards. And uh, like I said, got to see a lot of people and uh, shook a lot of hands. And it was a really, really good turnout and a uh, really mm-hmm. good night. Yeah. Yeah. I was actually going to ask you what it was like to see your name on the banner with all those names, but you just kind of. Oh, yeah. That's like when looking at it while it was up there, um, that, that was crazy. That was something. And uh, kind of, uh, you know, put the camera on me. Um, on the jumbotron there and i think a tv timeout i think it was mm-hmm. and uh just kind of they did that to each one of the inductees just to give you know um say hello to the fans and uh i played my uh kind of thank you video uh, you know that was pretty special you know for the, the fans to see that and uh yeah i got i got goosebumps when i first see my name you know up there especially just having your name there is one thing and then you've seen the other names that are on there with you you're like wow this mm-hmm. is you know this is pretty special so yeah it was it was a really awesome night. Right. I couldn't imagine what it was actually, what it was like, because I mean, like you just said, your name's up there. It, it's not for a night. It's not for a moment. It's up there permanently. Like yeah. you are now etched in Danbury history. <laughs> just hearing you say that still, uh, you know, gives me goosebumps. Um, it, it's, it's pretty cool. And I don't think it really sunk in until I kind of, until I was leaving, you know, and talking to guys and then, uh, hearing guys say, you know, yeah, every time I got to go, I got to see your name now, every time I got to, I got to play in Danbury, you know, so that, that was kind of cool. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very special. And like you said, the fact that, you know, it's there to stay is, is um, pretty amazing. So. Right. Cause even when professional athletes at, at all levels, you, you get your, you know, your Jersey or your, your number retired, that, that's a prestigious honor. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, this, absolutely. Granted this is single A hockey, but this is still mm-hmm. professional hockey. So it's, yeah, it's amazing. I, I'm proud of you. I think it's yeah. awesome. Yeah, no, thank you, man. I appreciate that. It, it's funny because it's that that's just something always as a kid that, you know, you uh, you dream of being able to make a name for yourself in, in you know, in a city like that. But, you, you know, realistically, that, you know, that just doesn't usually happen. But then to get an opportunity to play uh, six seasons in somewhere like Danbury and then, mm-hmm. you know, not just win a championship, not just, you know, be successful, but then to come back years after you retired and to be honored like that is, you know, it's almost like a dream come true. So, um, yeah, it was just, it was surreal at certain points right. of the night. Yeah. Yeah. I bet. 
So we are running low on time, but I want to jump over to a couple of fan questions that some fans had. Now, I'm assuming, because Carancy is a very uh, specific name, I'm assuming this might be one of your relatives. Tony? Uh, there's a couple Tonys, yeah. There's a couple yeah. Tonys. Yeah. Well, we got a question from Tony Carancy. You were inducted into the Ring of Honor when you last played for Danbury. What kind of reception do you think you will get when you play against them this year? That's actually a good question. I don't know. I played against Danbury once, the Titans, when I was uh, with uh, the Wolves, uh, mm-hmm. with Espo. And um, didn't get... I didn't really get booed or cheered. Uh, I got heckled a little bit by 102, which I would have been disappointed if I didn't. Uh, mm-hmm. Section 102, you, you, you know, I don't got to tell you about them. Everyone knows what they're oh, yeah. to miss. They, right? Section 102 has already been a topic of our podcast already. And we're only on episode number five. <laughs> really? So, oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, that's good. I'm, I'm sure they will, they would like to hear that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I got heckled by them a little bit, which, uh, which I actually liked. And uh, that was it. So, Coming back now, especially after the ceremony and everything, I, I really don't know. Um, either way, I'm looking forward to it. It's a great place to play. So I'm really looking forward to uh, to going back there and playing in Danbury. And uh, question number two, what do you think contributed to the 2013-2014 season being your best season statistically? Uh, that was, was the year after the championship, I believe. Um, I mean, it, it definitely had, uh, a, a, you know, to do with my line mates as well. I think I played with uh, mm-hmm. Ilya Solarev uh, that year um, who, who played in the KHL and he's just an uh, unbelievable hockey player, has that East-West mentality, um, you know, so playing with guys like that always makes it easier. And uh, other than that, I mean, I, I don't know. Um, n- not getting injured, I'm sure, <laughs> you know, because I've- Yeah, staying yeah. healthy is always priority. <laughs> It is. And yeah, I've been, uh, hate to say it, but a bandaid for, uh, the, you know, the better part of my career missing quite a few man games that more than I care to know, <laughs> to be honest with you. But, um, yeah, other than that, I really don't know what contributed uh, to it, but that's where, again, what I'm looking to do this year. So. Absolutely. All right. And uh, final question, Stephanie wants to know that coming out of retirement is not an easy task. What motivated you to return to the game and how will your playing style change being a veteran? Um, that's a, that's another good question. There's a couple factors. Uh, I guess like, um, like Rocky said, I think it was in Rocky Bell boy, you know, I still got something left in the basement and, uh, <laughs> that's just, you know, that's not something that you can lie to yourself about. Uh, it doesn't matter, you know, where you are in life or kind of what you're doing or how good your job is. Um, it's just something that I knew I wanted to do. And I, like I said, I toyed with the idea in Danbury a couple of years ago. Right. And mm-hmm. now at, at 36, it's now or never. I mean, um, the only guys um, who would have given me a shot were the coaches that had actually coached against me or, or knew me. You know, mm-hmm. anyone that didn't really coach against me, they're kind of like, all right, 36 years old. They don't know if I'm in shape that I've been training all summer. They, they don't know what kind of guy I am, right? So um, uh, I knew it was now or never, and that's it. I said, I, I just made a decision. I'm like, I'm going to do it, and whatever happens, happens. So um i'm definitely gonna have to be you know using my head because at 36 i'm not as fast as i was at 26 that's for sure mm-hmm. uh, right. still got we- you know still got wheels but <laughs> not like not like i used to so yeah um i hear you there yeah so it'll be interesting but uh i'm really looking forward to it perfect well so are we we're looking forward to seeing uh mississippi hit the ice so a couple closing statements um your mississippi sea wolves First game of the season is coming up tomorrow night at 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 6 Central. You open up on the road in Binghamton. Do you have anything you would like to say to Sea Wolf? I don't know what you call it. Sea Wolf Nation. Is that what you guys call it? Sea Wolf. Yeah, sure. That works. Sea Wolf Nation. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. We hope the fans uh, tune in. I uh, want to thank them for the uh, turnout we had at the season uh, ticket holders party there. That was awesome. And, uh, we're looking forward to going there and grabbing a couple wings uh, in um, uh, in bingo. Not going to be easy, but uh, you know we're prepared for it. So hopefully they will tune in. Absolutely. And Mississippi Sea Wolves, your first home game is on Friday, October twenty eighth at eight oh five Eastern Standard Time, seven oh five Central. Mister Matt Grancy and company will be taking on the Columbus River Dragons at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum. So be sure to get your tickets. Pack the house there. Be sure to follow the Mississippi Sea Wolves on all social media platforms and don't forget about us at Benchminer Hockey, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and be sure to subscribe to both YouTube channels so you can check out 
our podcast and their live streams. Again, thank you so much, Matt, for coming on. Really appreciate you, buddy. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. It was, uh, it was great doing this. Absolutely. We'll bring you back on eventually. But thank you for uh, tuning in, everybody. We'll talk to you soon.